Yeah, so this is part three. But I wanted to tell you more in depth about this world or worlds or, you know, these consecutive dreams I've been having about this particular place. It seems to be like in a rural place, like a West Virginia type of place, like somewhere where coal miners are. It seems to be kind of like that, a place that's hard to get to. Uh, and people, you know, most of the people out there are Caucasian, and they're not used to seeing, like, black people. But, you know, one of those areas, because there are areas like that. Nothing against them, it's just like that. There's 250 million of them, there's 40 million of us. So, uh, nonetheless, so these areas are... Uh, okay, so I want to talk about getting to this place, to this job I was looking for. For one, my car had broken down. And when my car broke down, I was traveling over this bridge, right? And when I was walking on this bridge, I noticed that I was walking over the bridge. I was like walking over like the high part of the bridge, like the place where you don't walk, you know? And it was normal. It was normal for me to, like, the parts, the steel beams, like, I was walking up that with, like, ease. And something had happened to the bridge, and um, and the bridge was still there, but it was like I wasn't even phased, like, anything else, like, for anything that was going on with the bridge at all. Because, I, I don't know, I, I just had, uh, there was something extra about me there. I had some extra energy or something where... I just knew I was okay. Not to mention, the bridge was like a mile or so long. It was really, really long. And I just walked across that bridge uh, and because I was looking for this place of employment because it was the only place around to get to get money and I really needed it. So uh, when I walked across the bridge, I remember, you know, getting on a you know regular road and I just kept walking and I kept asking people for a ride and nobody would give me a ride. So I tried to catch a bus, you know, just no luck. So I ended up walking out uh, to this place. And the further I got out there, this one, I ran into the railroad tracks. When I ran into the railroad tracks, the trains were different. They weren't as high as the trains that you usually see. And the railroad tracks were like amusement park uh, tracks, like cars on amusement park. Except the, it was a train. They were boxy trains. But the tracks were, you know, would go like this. So when a train would come past you, it would come past you and lean like a, you know, car on an amusement park. So it was different. It wasn't like, you know, a, you know, no train's usually going to do that, but it would come past you like super speed, like 70, 80 miles an hour. And, it, and I had to get on one of these trains. Uh, but so the trains would go, one would whip past you this way, one would whip past you that way. And eventually what, they would stop. But the thing about these trains were they were not controlled by people. They weren't. And they already have trains like that. They they do this at you know at the uh, at the yard. So they have remote control. But these trains were fully automated. Sometimes they stopped, sometimes they didn't. And I had to get on one of them to get to this job, and that's exactly what I did. So I got on one, it took me so far, I even had to switch the tracks on one. And, you know, I went as far as I could, then I was on foot again, and then I got to the job. I ended up getting a job, but nobody was used to seeing a black man there. But nonetheless, I ended up working there. So I wanted to explain that. Now, I wanted to also explain uh, this. It, the world didn't only consist of that area. It also consists, and I keep having the same dreams about these same places, I wanted to tell you about the neighborhoods of this world, uh, the rural, the city neighborhoods. For one, where the uh, uh, okay, there was another industrial area where there were uh, houses, but they all looked like it looked like a junkyard. But all all of the garbage was in squares, so they were stacked up like real neat but real high. And there was a machine that was coming out and doing it. And there were people working the machine, but 
all the garbage was stacked up in squares. And, you know, and you can see, and it was like fields of it. But it wasn't like the garbage how we got these big old garbage piles just strewn about. They were all stacked up in squares. But not far from there was the hood. So, uh, and, it, and it wasn't like the hood was built on, you know, the garbage. Nothing like that. But the hood was not far. It was in walking distance. And you could see the hood, right? So, in the hood, the houses were mostly empty. There were people there, mostly black. Uh, but uh, the houses were, it was, a, I put it to you like this. You know how Thanos snapped his fingers and 50% of the people disappeared? It was like 75% of the people of the world were not there. There were no heavily populated areas in these dreams. And these are consecutive dreams for like months now. So, uh, you know, I'd, I'd have a dream one night and I would dream about one area, then I'd dream about the other area, and I'm just now tying it all together. So anyways, in the hood, you would see black people there, and then you would go up into these, you know, into these apartments. You would see them stacked on top of each other, but they were, but the way they were stacked, it was almost like they were leaning over. You know, it was, it was just strange the way they were stacked on top of each other. Uh, like physically, I don't even think it's possible. But nonetheless, some of them were straight up, but there were a whole bunch of them, but they were mostly abandoned. So there wasn't a lot of people there. But nonetheless, there were people there, and they were afraid. They were afraid. They were running around like frantic. Now, when I dreamt about the nicer areas, you know, there were white people, you know. And I hate to do that because there are black people who live in you know, uh, nice areas too, you know, uh, but in these, in the dreams, I'm just telling you what I saw. So I'm not saying all black people are poor because we know that's not true. Um, but nonetheless, when I went up into the suburbs, the suburbs were pretty much abandoned. There was hardly, hardly anybody there. Like I said, it was like one third of the people there was only one third of the people even left it. I don't even think it was that much. I, I'm telling you, it was like maybe a tenth of the population actually was in the world. So that's a lot of people gone. But uh, so when you go up into the suburb, you see these really, really nice houses, pristine. You could walk right in because nobody was there. Um, sounds like the rapture or something, don't it? Maybe it, maybe it was, uh, but nobody was there. Uh, now, some places did have spirits that were in their houses, so they were not a good place to be, and the spirit would chase you out of there. So it got kind of spooky. But the majority of the houses that you saw were so nice. It was middle class, upper middle class, and rich. And um, you hardly saw anybody, but there were people that lived there. You hardly saw them, though, but... Uh, you were you could you could go and sleep in any of those houses you wanted to. There was nobody there to say you can't stay here. That's kind of how it was. So yeah, all those worlds were. The, uh, that's all one world. Everything I've been explaining for the last uh, three days. That's that's all one place. And um, it's coming back to me the more I talk about it. Now, some of you guys have been dreaming crazy stuff since you were a kid and so have I and some of you guys have been feeling spirits and all that I've been going through all that too my brothers too uh, so you know we gotta stay in prayer and look I know uh, you know people are in sin I sin you sin but it doesn't mean to stop praying because the more you start talking to God and start praying to God like what's going on the more answers you're gonna get so you know, a lot of times I'm like, Lord, like, help me out, figure this all out. But like I said, I think God is talking to everyone. I'm a regular Joe. So if God is talking to regular Joes. He's talking to everybody. And some of you guys are extraordinary and he's talking to you and you guys are listening to me and you're like, yo, Tone, same thing is happening to you. It's happening to me. But I can see these dreams very vividly. I can even see some of my relatives in some of these dreams that I would go and talk to. And, and some of those relatives are no longer here. 
uh, but they're in these dreams. Um, you know, there's just just a lot of crazy stuff. Like uh, the uh, the other day, I was uh, dreaming, and I had on, and you know, I had on like regular clothes, and I had on my work boots. I got some heavy work boots uh, upstairs. And I remember I had to go somewhere and I ran. Now, I can't run anymore. My knees are just shot. They won't allow me to run. I was probably clocking 45, 50 miles an hour just running. And I know it seems like there's a theme with running, but I think it's a theme with the physical ability. I think that's what it is. But I was able to run at a very high speed for a very long distance. And um, uh, there's just so much to this world. And I was trying to find my, you know, I was trying to go to like a store and back. But when I came back, I got lost, you know, and ran in, in, in the road start to change. And so things were changing. But my ability to run at that high speed, it, it just stayed the same. So no matter where I was, I was able to accelerate at, you know, 40, 50 miles an hour like it was jogging, like it was nothing. And some of you uh, don't know that I used to be a long-distance sprinter. So I used to sprint the mile in uh, under five minutes. I'm cooking, too. And uh, so for me to fantasize about running is not a big deal because uh, I always have dreams about running because I can no longer run. Cooking. I can no longer run, uh, especially at high speed. But, um, okay, also, in these worlds, I am able to fly in these worlds, like I said, and I've had so many dreams that I'm able to fly in, and I'm thinking it's all the same world, and, you know, I can even control my flight, so I find that interesting, and I think there's going to be people that are really going to be flying around here pretty soon, I just think it's going to happen. Uh, but, um, hold on a second. Turn my food over. Got some fish going on here and some potatoes. Uh, some fish and potatoes, you guys. Hun some hungry man food right there. Fish and chips in the house. All right, so yeah, so uh, yeah, but um, so I can fly in these dreams too, uh, specific ones, uh, and some of them I could run at really, really high speed, blinding speed, and um, but I'm not racing anybody, I'm not competing against anybody, you know, I'm not fighting against some entity or whatever or you know government or something like that or I can just do these things and that's why I think whenever these things happen it's going to be casual it's not going to be you know I think it's just going to come about it's not going to be some genetic editing but I think it's going to come about because of what the world is going through and the people who are being you know, taken advantage of and discarded, I think that genetically they're just going to figure something out uh, and create their own space somewhere and flee. They're going to run and they're going to protect themselves the best they can. Some of them might even, you know, go underwater. And I've been looking into that, uh, how enticing the water is now uh, because it's, you know, there's so much space there. You know, 90% uh, of it we don't even know about. Uh, and it's a highly volatile, dangerous place. But nonetheless, there you can't tell me there's not a place of peace in there somewhere. I believe that there is. And I think that um, people are going to find it. And not only that, I think their bodies are going to adapt to it. I think that breathing underwater is a thing. Uh, just somebody just going in and breathing underwater. I just think it's going to happen. You know, we've seen cases where people have been frozen and then they come back up and then they're alive. I think that, you know, 
the lungs are going to adapt and um, uh, I don't think it's going to be an accident. I don't think somebody's going to fall in the water and then all of a sudden they're just like, oh my God, I can breathe underwater. No, I think it's something that is going to happen. It's going to just adapt and people are just going to walk right in the water and boom, that's where they're going to live. Um, so these dreams are really something, but I think dreams and reality are mixing and I think the abilities that these dreams are exhuming are going to come to fruition and somebody's going to be able to do these things because of the pressures that humanity is under. And I think this has happened before. I think these uh, super strong, uh, super fast, super smart, uh, the ability to blink from one place to another, I don't think these are all accidents. I don't think these comic book-like abilities are accidents at all. Uh, people thinking of them, I think they're real. I think people can really do these things. We just haven't seen it on a mass scale. Uh, but the more pressure that a, a cell is under, the more adaptive that cell will be. You know, and uh, like like anything, a cell is going to try to survive. And I think if people need to, uh, if people are, you know, in tunnels and decide to live in tunnels to escape whatever it is, and this has happened, then their eyesight is not going to be adapted to the sun. The eyesight's not adapted to the sun, but their hearing is going to be impeccable. They're going to be able to hear for miles, like a whale or something like this. It's just not uncommon. And uh, I think we're about to see an explosion of these abilities and um, these people aren't going to be what you would call special. And you're not going to be not special because you can't do it. That's not what's going to happen. It's just simply going to be an adaptive living. And it's not something that's going to be forced. Like you can't say, I'm going to go live underground so I can lose my sight and get an impeccable hearing. It's just not going to work like that. It's just going to be a geographical area that's has this ability to do this, this ability is going to be, and I just think that's what's going to happen um, because of uh, the ridiculousness that's going on in societies right now, and there's just not going to be anywhere else to go. And when you corner, you know, uh, an animal, they're going to turn around and they're going to show their teeth. And when they do, you're, you might be surprised at what's going to happen. So that's just more about the dreams and what I think is going to happen. And uh, if you guys really like this series, uh, just let me know and I will tell you more about these crazy dreams. God loves you, man. Get yourself saved because he's coming soon. I'm out.